Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Zero Cut Profiles. My, my, has it been a long time. I hope the pack opening shorts have been tiding y'all over. Today, we are going to be going over a very special deck profile. The NR Super Quant profile I piloted to top three at the second New Rivals event on Friday, June 7th, just a couple of days ago. But I figured, get it out now and let people enjoy a bit of it like I did. So, today we are going to be going over the deck, and I'm actually going to be showing you a clip from my stream of one of the games and commentating over it to see what the thought process was behind playing the deck, just in case you ever want to try it yourself. And I highly recommend that this deck has been absolutely amazing to play. It's super duper fun. So, without further ado, let's get into the card by card. We have two Super Quanto Fairy Alphan. You might think we should play three, but realistically, this is a lot less reliable without Red Lair, which in turn makes it a lot less bodies on the field and less useful, but it's great as discard fodder, and that's why we play a couple of them to prevent something like a Rhapsody and Berserk from absolutely destroying us. Next, we have three Super Quantum Blue Lair. This card starts everything. It can search the field spell, it can get discard fodder in white lair, it can e get even more deck cycling green lair for white lair for Alphan, things like that. You'll get to see some of that in these games. Or in this game, I should say. We have three Jewelry Punk Madam Spider, a great tuner monster. It searches interruptions, can be a decent normal summon, but works really well with blue lair and overdrive teleporter. Next, we have Super Quantum Green Lair. Two of that because it's not the best normal summon unless we have another quant name, but if we do have another quant name, then we can make really good use of it. And its graveyard effect is pretty decent as well. Next, we have three Overdrive Teleport. You can pay 2,000 life points to special summon two level three psychic type monsters from your deck. This is really good. And we can use it to go into a couple of different combos. You can see in the extract, we've got one guy chilling right here that can be made in this deck, which is really neat. You don't see this guy too often. Next, we have two Super Quantum White Lair, a great search off of blue, can be pitched to search an Alphan, which is even more discard fodder, and you can use its first effect occasionally to make rank 7s, make rank 4s occasionally if you need to send green, things like that. It doesn't come up too often, but it does definitely happen, and it's a 2400 beat stick on top of that, which does come up in the game you're going to get to see. Next, we have three Labyrinth Archfiend. We're pairing this with two Jelly Cannon, I'm jumping a little bit ahead in the profile, because we don't have a lot of fiends. We have some ways that were left over from testing, like Dispatch Parazzi, but in general, we really just need extra interruptions. This deck wants to outlast, control the field, and then swing in for a couple thousand damage. Maybe a little bit more than that. Two Keshtira Ogre, a free level seven body that we could play the Keshtira Trap for in future versions of this deck, probably so, just because it's even more discard fodder, but it's a free special summon of a 2800 level 7 body. It's also psychic, which doesn't really come up, but it's interesting to see, and of course, it is a format staple a lot of the time. We have only one Super Quantum Mech Ship Magna Carrier. That's because your opponent is not going to be aiming for this. If your opponent aims for this in their removal, then that's really good for you. This card is recoverable. This card only really makes uh, Grand Pulse, sometimes Ereboros. It's not as crazy as the wacky trap lineup you can see coming up. But in general, you only need one, it's recyclable. I forgot to play the hollow for the tournament, so sad to say it's not as glossy as it could be, but that's all right. Next, we have three Torrential Tribute, Format Staple, Rex the Field, and all of your quants have graveyard effects, as well as they are very recoverable thanks to Blue's graveyard effect. This, this graveyard effect is mwah, French Kiss Magnifique. Absolutely amazing for this deck. We have three Paleozoic Dynamiscus. We have plenty of discard fodder, and this is a format staple anyways. One Lost Wind, we would play more if it wasn't limited. But again, recoverable stuff from the graveyard. We want to recycle, keep using things as best we can. Next, we have two Jelly Cannon to be searched off of the Lab Archfiend. This card's not that bad. Realistically speaking, we could play the Labyrinth Trap, but it's a lot harder to get off if we don't have Fiends. So if this gets added or we can't get to a Dispatch Parazzi or something would be better, but we have to sacrifice it for the Dispatch Parazzi? That's not as good, but Jelly Cannon is completely generic, and we can use it on our turn, just like the Labyrinth Trap. Next, we have two Jewelry Punk Dangerous Gobu. This is a monster negate with an extra bonus life point gain effect for punks. That does come up every now and then, but mainly it's the monster negate that is completely non-punk specific. Then we have Jewelry Punk Nashiwari Surprise, 
which can target a set card, or if you control a punk target, a face-up card, destroy it. This is a lot better for situations where we leave Jerury Punk Madam Spider on the field. That's if we have to normal summon it, or if we already have a dangerous Gabu, we can search one of each trap. Next, we have two Oasis of Dragon Souls, which is decent revival. It's just on-demand revival of something like a blue, or occasionally a Lab Archfiend, but primarily blue, to search more stuff. Then we have three Dark Factory of More Production. Get that deck cycling in. Dark Factory of More Production, pitching, an, pitching a white layer to search an Alphan and you get to draw a card, or pitching a green layer, which draws you a card, pitch, an, pitch a white layer, then grab an Alphan, draw some cards, things like that. It's, it's a lot of cycling. It's really nice. Finally, we have two Double Hooking. This card comes up a lot as an easy way to accrue some advantage again. You can revive a Madam Spider in a blue layer, get a couple of searches. You can revive a couple of level 7s occasionally, go into a rank 7, which does come up, but not in this duel, sadly. And it's just really nice, and it's discard, so we can completely fund it almost scot-free every time with something like an Alphan or a White Lair. Next, we have Stardust Charge Warrior. This comes up in a couple of combos, but it's just a Synchro 6 that draws us a card. And it has some board breaking capabilities, but reasonably speaking, it's not that helpful unless we're beating over something like a Melfi Field. But if we're beating over a Melfi Field, we've probably got bigger issues. Next, we have Hyper Psychic Blaster. This is not generic, but we can make it off of a Jeruri Punk Plus and Overdrive Teleporter. And that does come up. It is a 3000 attack beat stick with piercing that has some life, some life point gain effects, but reasonably speaking, it's just for the body. It's fun that we get to play this but it's not going to come up too, too often. Next, we have two Super Quantal Mech Beast Grampals, a format staple for rank 3 decks, or decks that can make rank 3, and it's actually really easy to make here. We maybe don't need two, but it has come up where I've needed to summon two or three of them in a game, so even having it with the Field Spell and Blue Lair in the deck, it's nice to have more than one. We have the Quick Effect capability thanks to it having Super Quantum Blue Lair as material, which is really, really nice. It's Really, really nice disruption. It's effectively Mystical Space Typhoon on a 2800 defense wall, and that by itself is worth looking at. We have Virtual World Shell Jaja. This card is so stinking annoying. It came up so many times during testing with my opponents, and I despise it. But you know what? It's so good. We are going to be playing it ourselves, and you can't stop me. It has some great battle related effects, can protect itself or other cards, but in general, it's just a rank 3 we can make. Didn't really come up during the tournament. We actually ended up hard summoning Grampals instead, <laughs> but it's fine. Next, we have Super Quantum Mech Beast Aeroboros. Only one. This deck can't really make rank fours, but in the case of Field Spell plus Green Lair, it does come up. If you go Green Normal Summon Special Blue Search Field Spell, pitch a couple of cards, you can have a Grampals and an Aeroboros together on a field, which is two forms of interruption. It's a Book of Moon and a Mystical Space Typhoon. Couple that with one or two back row, and you're living large. We have a Dragonlark Pyron. This is an alternate combo using Overdrive Teleporter, where you make Charge Warrior and overlay it with the Overdrive Teleporter to make Pyron, and you can revive the blue layer if you leave it in the grave, which is really, really nice. Did come up a couple of times, or would have if I hadn't misplayed, but, you know, that's neither here nor there at this point. It's over. <laughs> But it's great, it's protection, it's way to get more advantage from the Super Quants, and that is everything this deck is after. We have one Dark Armed, the Dragon of Annihilation. This is one of the most offensive board-breaking rank 7s. Then we have Harmonizer Radial, which is a more defensive control rank 7 that has protection, and also the art is really, really pretty. Happy Pride Month as well. Anyway, we have a Code Breaker Virus Swordsman, the strongest Link 2 in the game. I am one of the people who is really weird and plays Codebreaker and Pit Knight early. I know some people do that, but I'm one of the weird people for doing it. We have a Geonator Transverser, because it does come up. We don't always have three monsters, but it happens with like a Paleo or things like that, if we can make use of it. Next we have Dispatch Parazzi, which was left over due to testing, didn't ever come up, but realistically you could replace this with just about anything you wanted in the extra deck. A Steel Star Regulator would actually be pretty funny, but we didn't think of that in time. Next, we have a Pit Knight Early, which is backup Codebreaker if we're still trying to stall. That effect Monster Negate actually came up once or twice, and if I hadn't misplayed, it probably would have been a lot better. But, you know, again, neither here nor there, it's over, and I learned from it. So, without further ado, we have our final two monsters. You thought I was going to skip them, didn't you? 
We have Triple Burst Dragon and Berserker, the 1082 best Link 3s in the format, other than Harass Velger, but we don't have that many bins in this deck. So Triple Burst Dragon has Piercing, has a Damage Step Negate, things like that. It's it's pretty good. And then Berserker, the 10 is just a 3000 attack beat stick. Some of this as well was built around having 10 but we ended up switching to Labyrinth Archfiend instead of 10 Mech Knight, which ended up being kind of an odd switch, but it worked out in the end. So without further ado, let's get into the games. Now you might be wondering why I'm in solo mode. And that's because I need background music. Full confession, we are not watching this duel on Master Duel because I forgot to save it at the time. So here we've got background music popping up, and if I just line up my model perfectly... Okay, I tried. <laughs> we are going to be watching this replay, and I'm going to be commentating over it from the Twitch VOD. Twitch.tv slash Vam Yu-Gi-Oh, by the way. So, let's go ahead and begin. And I will be commentating over two times speed because this duel took like 20 minutes. <laughs> so, I don't want to keep y'all here that long. Let's begin. You can see we're going second, and our hand is pretty interesting for the punk side. The punk side of things we have, Normal Summon, Madam Spider, Search, and Ashiwari Surprise. Set Dangerous Gabu and the Nashibari and pass, and we have the Lab Archfiend to get even more advantage in bodies. That set, this is the second time I actually played against Fanthalia's uh, Earth Insect deck, the Ballpark deck, so I had a little bit of preparation for this. I had a feeling that set was probably Goki Pole, in which case I wasn't worried about it as long as I could control it, because Goki Pole combined with Infinite Antlion is not a fun combo to deal with for this deck and it did end up coming up some bad luck in the following two games had me lose the best of three sadly but it's all right and you can see my model's gonna be a bit glitchy in the corner it was a very very busy day <laughs> but see i was right the prediction was good and flipping up the goki pole i figured i could try to do something with it i didn't know exactly honestly why i did that but here we use the gabu on the antlion to avoid equipping some other Goki Pole or a Retaliating Sea, which at the time I didn't actually realize they played Retaliating Sea, but it ended up coming up later on in this duel. Spoilers ahead. So you can see the Madam Spider's going to get us some life points. We can trigger the Lab Archfiend to go grab a Jelly Cannon, and that Jelly Cannon actually ended up almost saving us. It gave us a little bit of extra advantage, which again, a little bit turns into a lot with this deck. They have two level threes, so they can go ahead and try to overlay, and what they end up overlaying into, they're thinking about it right here, is Soul of the Silver Mountain to trigger the Goki Pole and try to turn off one of my sets. However, the set that they target is not the Jelly Cannon. They choose to target the Nashiwari Surprise, and I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but that's because there's going to be a couple things resolving at once. So it's not destroying it, but it is disabling it, so I'm basically forced to activate it now, because otherwise the Nashiwari will lose its punk help and then there won't be a good way to kill it. And they're about to get the Goki Pole Search, which they're gonna get either way, but I'd rather get rid of more stuff. So Goki Pole's gonna trigger, and they are going to grab a Flying Kamakiri number two. And that Flying Kamakiri number two is gonna be Special Summon, pop the Lab Archfiend. Now they can go to battle and kill the Madam Spider, which is a little bit annoying, but we have some recovery. One thing important to note, is I was playing to avoid Ballpark. Ballpark was the biggest threat in this entire deck. If it got established, that would be a ton of damage, and this deck already pays a decent amount of life points with Overdrive Teleporter, as well as a bunch of Rank 4s, different abilities. Harass Velger was an option. We decided to normal summon Alphan here, which is a rare effect to see for this deck, but it does come up, so we go for the three names. There's a little bit of advantage we can gather with this, and I wanted to get blue in rotation for that Oasis of Dragon Souls. So we summon white, and white can trigger mill something, blue can trigger cycling back some super quants. So, so we decide to do a couple here, and I decide to just mill a blue. Because I'm thinking, okay, let's keep the names in the deck. Because none of them are terribly bad draws. Like, green's annoying, but it can work sometimes. And I don't like keeping names in the grave, because then if blue stays in grave, then I run out of blues to cycle blue out of the grave. So we're passing on a 2400 plus a couple of back row. We've got a Jelly Cannon and a Waste of Dragon Souls and a Dangerous Gabu, which, reasonably speaking, is not bad. We have an Interruption. There's a double hooking, and you can see just how strong this card is. Pitching a Camellia 
and pitching to grab a Goki pole, which is a ton of good resource use. Here we're trying to avoid doing too, too much. They end up normal summoning a Cherry of Ain, which does throw me off just a little bit. Here I, I make a misplay because I misread Goki Pole's effect, and you can see I notice it right after. <laughs> My reaction was very annoyed when I realized it triggered in the graveyard. But here you can see Nachuri of Ain. That would have been a much better Gabu. And this whole turn was full of misplays, honestly, but it ended up working out for our favor. So first off, I don't want to use Oasis. I want to, because at the time I'm thinking, oh, I can go Jelly Can and Chain Oasis. I cannot. That is not how that works. So sadly, they are going to get the Goki Pole trigger, but that is going to cost them their Camellia. And we're just going to wait here. Goki Pole is going to crash. They're going to take some damage and then grab the second Flying Kamakiri number two. And that Flying Kamakiri number two is going to go ahead and special summon itself whenever it gets added to the hand and pop the White Lair. Now that white lair is going to give me some more precious advantage, which is really nice. I want to get the Alphans out of the deck and into the graveyard. Because unless you want to make a Rhapsody and Berserk and banish both Alphans, which is not optimal in many cases, then this is fine. We're going to go blue, grab the field spell, because once again, very, 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 very anti-field spell here. We really don't want Ballpark to be established. That would be a nightmare. Because then they could get a couple flying Kamkiris, a Sofiels, blah, 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 blah. And there's a ton here. So here's the Sun Avalon Dryas, which the first time I played against this deck, I completely forgot had an effect and threw away the game starting from turn two. Which stinks. But anyway, we're going to Tribute Summon and Overdrive Teleporter. Blue Lair is going to trigger. We're going to recycle the two layers and leave the Alphan in Grave because I really don't want to draw it since I have one. We're going to special summon a blue and a Jeruri Punk, but we don't have another Jeruri Punk. And I misclick. I right-clicked and misclicked by mistake. But here we have a couple of options. We have Pit Knight early. We have the Grand Pulse, which doesn't really do much, but it is a little bit defensive. I go to get the Charge Warrior as my decision because I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can draw into another interruption like a Dynamiscus or something. I do have an Alphan. At least I think that was at the time. But here you can see, I don't really want to go for the field spell too, too much, because it does happen, and there isn't really much here to make use of for it, so I like saving it for when it's really going to be useful. So here I'm debating whether to overlay into Pyron, but then I decide to just go to battle, and I'm organizing my attacks here as well for the damage. I think I optimize the damage, because they're going to take battle effect damage, trigger dry ass, and summon out a Sunvine Gardna. And the Sunvine Gardna is going to have battle damage from an attack, but in the battle phase when it's destroyed. So that little defensive engine is there. We're going to overlay into the Pyron. And one card I kept playing into was Shinobi Insect Hagakure Mino. And you're going to get to see that card in this duel. It's really stinking annoying, but it ended up being one of the incentives for them to make it was that I kept playing into it, but I could actually get away from it myself here. So you can see Pyron is going to trigger. This part of the deck was really, really nice for accruing advantage. We're going to target a blue layer, special summon it back to the left zone. I don't remember if there was any particular reason for that one. And here we have a white and an Alphan, so we can grab a green. If we pitch the green, we can draw a card. We can draw a card from something like the Dark Factory of More Production, but green layer itself can pitch a white layer to draw a card, and then white layer can search an Alphan, so we get even more cycling advantage. There's the ballpark. There's the nightmare fuel. And sadly, we don't have a good way around it. We do have some backup plans. This is not game over. I completely thought about this situation. What I didn't think about was if they bricked. And how do you brick in a ballpark deck? You have two flying comic curies in the grave, and you're about to see it when they normal summon. Come on, come on, I'm trying to do a video here. When they normal summon the third flying kamakiri number two and you can see that's really bad for them because they can no longer trigger ballpark to summon three from grave which is bad for them very very bad but here they can still go for a goki pole grab retaliating c and retaliating c is not the biggest thing we don't play a lot of spell cards but it does turn off the Magna Carrier, which means we do have to do a little bit of fidgeting with the way we're 
playing the game now, I can't just go Magna Carrier into Grand Pulse to pop the ballpark. We have to get rid of it without uh, without triggering the field spell to trigger Retaliating Sea, which we can trigger Retaliating Sea if we want to, but it's not optimal. So here, Pyron is going to end up saving us. They make the Haga Karamino, and we can revive a Madam Spider. We're not going for Synchros, though, because... If you remember, Grand Pulse itself is an NR staple. It is a generic rank 3 with back row removal. And so we can go overlay into Grand Pulse, hard making it in Super Quants, which is terribly ironic. I summon in defense because it really doesn't matter. We can gather lethal anyways. But just in case something goes wrong. I don't know what would go wrong, but just in case. Next, we can... I'm looking at my extra deck to see what we can do. We go normal summon green, green effect normal to special summon white. And we don't trigger... Oh, we do trigger white, sorry. Dumping another green. In case we need to, we can make an Ereboros, but this also allows us to discard that field spell that we can't use anymore to get another draw in case something goes wrong again. Playing really, really safe here because I'm utterly terrified of this deck. But here, we make a Codebreaker, and from here, that Haga Kuremino does not mean much. We go blue for the shuffle, shuffling back the Grand Pulse, a green layer and the field spell for later use, but there's not going to be any later use. We go to battle, 600 in, then 24 from White Lair, and Codebreaker Virus Swordsman for lethal. And thank you all very much for watching. This was an incredible tournament to be in. You can see we're back in the present now. You can see the little guy in the corner. But thank you all very much for watching. This deck was super fun to pilot. It was a great time getting back into the NR format, and I hope y'all end up giving Super Quant a try yourself. It was way better than even the developers of the NR format ever expected. When I was showing it off to the mods, to some of the owners, to some of my friends in there, they were really excited, and I was too. And that kind of community is what drove me to the Yu-Gi-Oh! in the first place. So with that being said, thank you all very much for watching. My name is Vam. Hope y'all have a great day. Peace.